Speaking of a true champion, Johnny Weissmuller was a remarkable American athlete and actor who conquered the world with his incredible swimming abilities and acting skills. Winning five Olympic gold medals and setting world records that left his competitors in awe. His iconic role of Tarzan made him a household name. He was the epitome of success, but sadly, fate had something else in store for him. After revealing a shocking secret, he faced a tragic death that stunned everyone. Join us as we delve into the life, career, and somewhat sad ending of Johnny Weissmuller. Early life and career of Johnny Weissmuller. Johann Peter Weissmuller was born in Sabadfalva on June 2, 1904, into a family with Banat Swabian roots, and was the sixth Weissmuller born in Hungary. At three days old, he was baptized in the Catholic faith and given the Hungarian version of his name, Janos. But then, life in Hungary was not panning out for his family as they had hoped. So his parents decided to move to the United States in search of greener pastures on January 1905. Johann and his parents, Peter and Elizabeth Weissmuller, voyaged to Ellis Island in America on a ship named SS Rotterdam and finally settled in Winber, Pennsylvania, with their relatives. And few years later, Johann's younger brother Peter was born. After spending three years in Pennsylvania, the Weissmuller family once again moved to Chicago to be closer to Johann's maternal grandparents. For the rest of Johnny's childhood, he lived with his family in a house where they rented a single level, and at Fullerton Beach on Lake Michigan, Johnny discovered his passion for swimming and took his first swimming lessons there. In no time, he had become exceptionally good at swimming and started winning races. These were indeed the best moments of his childhood. But then, as fate would have it, Johnny was in the eighth grade when his father unfortunately passed away, so he had to leave school to work and help support his mother and brother. When Johnny was 11, it was already clear to him that swimming was his only path to success, so out of desperation, he faked his age to join the YMCA, where you had to be at least 12. Upon joining, he immediately proved how talented he was and won every swimming race he entered, proving his potential as a future world champion, as he was also good at running and high jumping. Johnny quickly became part of one of the best swim teams in the country, the Illinois Athletic Club. Weissmuller's impressive skills caught the attention of swimming coach Bill Bachrach, and without hesitation, Bill became a strong father figure and guide for Johnny. On August 6, 1921, Weissmuller kicked off his competitive swimming journey where he entered four races organized by the Amateur Athletic Union and aced them all. He smashed his first two world records at the AAU. Nationals on September 27, 1921, in the 100 meters and 150 yards events. Then, on July 9, 1922, Weissmuller shattered Duke Kahanamoku's world record in the 100 meter freestyle, clocking in at a stunning 58.6 seconds. He also clinched the gold medal for that same distance at the 1924 Summer Olympics, outperforming Kahanamoku. But that was only the beginning, as Johnny would go on to triumph in the 400-meter freestyle and contribute to the victorious U.S. team in the 4x200-meter relay. In the following four years, he seized another two gold medals at the 1928 Summer Olympics in Amsterdam. During this time, Weissmuller became passionate about John Harvey Kellogg's comprehensive lifestyle beliefs concerning nutrition, enemas, and exercise. He visited Kellogg's Battle Creek, Michigan sanatorium to inaugurate its new 20-foot swimming pool and break one of his previous swimming records, all while following the vegetarian diet recommended by Kellogg. In 1927, Weissmuller smashed a new world record in the 100-yard freestyle finishing in a mind-blowing 51 seconds. This incredible feat remained unbeaten for a staggering 17 years. Later, at the Billy Rose World's Fair Aquacade in 1940, at the age of 36, he even improved his record to an astonishing 40 record, 8.5 seconds. However, this achievement was not officially recognized as he was not competing as a professional athlete. Remarkably, he never tasted defeat, and retired with a perfect amateur record. And in 1950, the Associated Press honored him by selecting him as the greatest swimmer of the first half of the 20th century. How Johnny Weissmuller became a movie star. After retirement, 
Weissmuller knew he could still be part of something great and answered his call into America's movie industry. His first big screen appearance was in Glorifying the American Girl, where he played a role without speaking lines, Adonis. In a striking scene, he wore only a fig leaf while lifting actress Mary Eaton. It caught the eye of writer Cyril Hume, a screenwriter at MGM. He saw Johnny as the perfect lead for his film, Tarzan the Ape Man. In 1931, Cyril Hume met the future Tarzan swimming in the Hollywood Athletic Club pool, and after pitching the movie to Weissmuller, he agreed to audition, and then became one of many people chosen to try out for the main role in MGM's initial Tarzan movie. On October 12, 1931, Louis B. Mayer and Irving G. Thalberg, MGM's production boss, signed the charming 27-year-old ex-Olympian to a seven-year deal. His debut movie would be Tarzan, the Ape Man. In this first Tarzan sound film, Weissmuller came up with the famous Call of the Wild for the Ape Man. Before taking on the iconic role of Tarzan, Weissmuller had already signed up with BVD Underwear as a model. MGM, the movie studio, made a deal to feature famous actresses like Greta Garbo and Marie Dressler in BVD ads, allowing Weissmuller to break free from his contract. Although the author of Tarzan, Edgar Rice Burroughs, wasn't thrilled with the studio's portrayal of Tarzan as someone who spoke very little English, he was pleased with Weissmuller. He started his Tarzan series with Herman Bricks in response, presenting a more articulate version of the character, closer to the original books. Weissmuller is widely regarded as the ultimate Tarzan. He originated from the famous Tarzan yell, a distinctive and unforgettable sound. This iconic yell was created by sound recordist Douglas Shearer, who manipulated Weissmuller's natural yell and played it in reverse. Following his success as Tarzan, Weissmuller starred in the Jungle Gym film series, where he played the lead role. He appeared in 16 Jungle Gym movies over eight years and later filmed 26 Jungle Gym TV series episodes. In 1957, Weissmuller retired from acting, leaving behind an impressive legacy as the legendary Tarzan, Johnny Weissmuller's personal life. Weissmuller faced challenges in his personal life despite his success in the Olympics and movies. Handling money and business matters wasn't his strong suit after his acting days ended. His financial advisor, Bo Christian Roos, took advantage of him, though Johnny also shared some responsibility. Roos also mishandled the finances of other Hollywood stars like John Wayne and Red Skelton. They all trusted Roos, but it led to financial disaster. Roos was described as shady but somehow avoided legal trouble. John Wayne, less forgiving than Johnny, wanted to sue Roos but couldn't find enough evidence. Roos's daughter wrote a book defending him, but many still saw his actions as harmful. Weissmuller had quite a journey in love, tying the knot five times with different partners. First, he married band and club singer Bobe Arnst in 1931, but they parted ways in 1933. Then, he found love with actress Lupe Velez in 1933, but their marriage ended in 1939. Following that, he married Beryl Scott in 1939, but they went their separate ways in 1948. Next up was Aline Gates in 1948, but their marriage ended in 1962. Finally, he found lasting love with Maria Gertrude Bauman, whom he married in 1963 and stayed with until his passing in 1984. With his third wife, Beryl, he welcomed three children, Johnny Weissmuller, Jr., Wendy Ann Weissmuller, and Heidi Elizabeth Weissmuller. Tragically, Heidi lost her life in a car accident in 1962. Johnny was also a stepfather to Bauman's daughter, Lisa Weissmuller Gallagher. Weissmuller wasn't just famous for his roles on screen, but also as a real-life hero. Back in 1927, while preparing for the Chicago Marathon, he saved a remarkable 11 people from drowning after a boat accident. There was a devastating incident on July 28, 1927, when a small excursion boat named The Favorite capsized in a sudden fierce storm, taking the lives of 16 children, 10 women, and one man. Despite the chaos, Weissmuller and other lifeguards managed to rescue over 50 people from the water, showcasing his bravery and heroism. Death of the Legend In 1974, Weissmuller had a terrible accident, breaking both his hip and leg. 
This marked the start of a tough time for him as his health began to decline. Despite his incredible strength and daily exercise routine, doctors discovered a serious heart condition while he was in the hospital. Things got worse in 1977 when he suffered from a series of strokes. By 1979, he had to stay in the motion picture and television country house and hospital in California for a while before moving to Acapulco, Mexico, with his last wife, Maria, where he filmed his final Tarzan movie. Before Johnny Weissmuller's health declined, he moved to Acapulco with his final wife, Maria Bauman. They also took trips to Europe in the late 1960s and early 1970s. Apart from their visits to Bavaria mentioned earlier, Johnny and Maria, sometimes with Maria's daughter, went to the Spanish island of Mallorca. According to the Spanish newspaper Diario de Mallorca, Johnny and Maria enjoyed their time on the resort island, where Tarzan could take a break from Hollywood studios and jungle adventures to relax on the beaches. They stayed at different hotels on Mallorca's northern coast during the summers of 1971, 1972, and 1973. Pep Cabanella's Gual, a former hotel manager at the Tacanera Cala Ratjada, remembered Weissmuller telling him that his first trip to Mallorca happened because screen legend Errol Flynn invited Johnny and other famous movie people to join him on his yacht, the former Navy schooner Zaka. Besides his fondness for the island, Weissmuller was also attracted to it because of his friendship with local German tourism promoter Hans Hasse. They both loved boxing and often talked passionately about it. Cabanellas mentioned that, unlike many other stars who indulged in excess, Weissmuller and his wife were very relaxed and humble. They enjoyed sailing, hiking, relaxing on the beach, and dancing together in the evening. Another witness recalled that the only excitement was when Johnny decided to play the trumpet with a local band at another hotel, and photographers were allowed to take pictures of him and the band members. It seems that Johnny's summers in Spain were a highlight of his later years before his health started to decline. On January 20, 1984, Weissmuller passed away at the age of 79 due to pulmonary edema, a condition where fluid builds up in the lungs. He was laid to rest outside Acapulco, in Valle de la Luz, at the Valley of the Light Cemetery. During his burial, as his coffin was being lowered into the ground, a recording of the famous Tarzan yell that he created was played three times, as he had requested. To honor him, there was a 21-gun salute usually reserved for important figures like heads of state, arranged by Senator Ted Kennedy and President Ronald Reagan. Johnny Weissmuller's legacy. Johnny Weissmuller's impact on the film world is celebrated with a Hollywood Walk of Fame star. In 1967, he even graced the cover of the Beatles' iconic album, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. His co-star and on-screen son, Johnny Sheffield, praised him, describing working with him as one of the most memorable experiences of his life. He emphasized Weissmuller's star quality and his lasting influence on him. In 1973, Weissmuller was honored with the prestigious George Eastman Award for his remarkable contributions to the art of film. The Piscine Molitor in Paris was constructed as a homage to Weissmuller and his incredible swimming abilities. Even Edgar Rice Burroughs, the creator of Tarzan, paid tribute to Weissmuller's portrayal of the character in his final novel, depicting him as a powerful and formidable figure. Weissmuller's swimming achievements were equally impressive, leading to his induction into the International Swimming Hall of Fame in 1965, where he also served as its founder chairman. The Legends Family and Relationships Johnny's first marriage to Bobby Arnst, a former nightclub singer, was his shortest marriage. In 1932, MGM gave Arnst $10,000 as a reward for divorcing Johnny. MGM wanted Johnny to be single for publicity reasons, but it wasn't that simple. The studio caused trouble between them, and the captivating Lupe Velez had already entered the scene. Lupe Velez had a reputation for being romantically involved with every co-star she worked with, and her tendency to be suspicious didn't help the marriage. In her career, Velez was known for her fiery and passionate on-screen character, which mirrored her real-life persona. She was often called names like the Mexican Spitfire and the Mexican It Girl by the press. Despite being labeled as wild, she saw herself as simple and natural. She believed her success came from being different. With beautiful eyes, she knew how to use them. 
While some saw her as wild, she described herself as being true to herself. Off-screen, Velez's behavior blended with her on-screen image. She was known for her loud clothing and being lively in Hollywood. She loved attending boxing matches, cheering loudly from her seat. However, her fiery temper and jealousy in relationships often made headlines, overshadowing her career. Her marriage to Johnny Weissmuller was marked by physical fights and passionate moments, making her personal life as tumultuous as her on-screen roles. Soon after, Velez crossed paths with Johnny Weissmuller while they were both in New York. They had an on-off relationship when they returned to Los Angeles. During this time, Velez also went out with actor Errol Flynn. They tied the knot on October 8, 1933 in Las Vegas. However, their marriage was tumultuous, with reports of fights and violence. Just 10 months later, Velez filed for divorce, citing cruelty, but withdrew the petition after a week. She filed for divorce again on January 3, 1935, and it was granted a month later. They reconciled briefly but ultimately divorced in August 1939. After her split from Weissmuller, Velez got involved with several actors, boxers, and polo players until she fell for Harold Maresch, an aspiring Austrian actor. They got engaged when she found out she was pregnant with his child. However, just days before her tragic death on December 14, 1944, Velez called off the engagement and asked Maresch to leave her home. On December 13, 1944, Velez had dinner with her friends Estelle Taylor and Vanita Oki. Later, she went to her bedroom and took a large amount of sleeping pills and brandy. Her secretary, Beulah Kinder, found her lifeless body in the morning. A note addressed to Harold Maresch was found nearby, expressing her despair and decision to end her life and their babies to spare them shame or harm. Harold Maresch, confused by her actions, claimed they had planned to marry despite their breakup. He admitted asking Velez to sign a paper acknowledging their relationship was for the baby's sake, but he said it was in anger. Estelle Taylor, who spent time with Velez before her death, revealed Velez's pregnancy and her refusal to have an abortion. Beulah Kinder, Velez's secretary, shared that Velez initially planned to go to Mexico to have the baby, but changed her mind when she felt deceived by Ramon. The day after her death, the coroner decided not to investigate further, concluding that Velez had intended to end her own life. A funeral service was held in Los Angeles, attended by ex-husband Johnny Weissmuller and actor Gilbert Rowland. Her body was then transported to Mexico City for another service before being laid to rest at Panteon Civil de Dolores Cemetery. Despite her driving Johnny Weissmuller crazy often, he still cared deeply for Lupe even after their divorce. Beryl Scott, a wealthy socialite from San Francisco, was the mother of Johnny's three kids. Johnny divorced Scott in Reno on January 28, 1948. On the same day, he married his fourth wife, Aline Gates, at the Donner Trail Ranch near Verde, Nevada. Then, it wasn't uncommon for weddings to happen right after divorcing one or both newlyweds. Aline Gates was a golfer who couldn't swim and was half Johnny's age. Johnny regarded him as his best wife. According to Tarzan, my father, she became the mother figure Johnny Jr. always wanted. They tied the knot at the Donner Trail Ranch near Reno, right after Johnny divorced his third wife. They have his third separated in July 28, 1961, when Johnny moved out of their home on Lorenzo Doctor, before their divorce in 1962. Maria Gertrude Baumann, formerly known as Maria Brock Mandel Baumann, was born in Berlin, according to German media. But she had a great nephew named Franz Baumann in Waldkirchen, Bavaria, near Passau. When Franz Baumann was a kid in Straubing, Maria and Weissmuller visited his family twice in Bavaria. She and Johnny were living in Acapulco when he passed away. Twenty years later, in 204, she was laid to rest beside Johnny in the Valley of Light Cemetery in Acapulco. This was Johnny's longest-lasting marriage. Not much is known about Johnny's daughters, but his son, Johnny Weissmuller Jr., was a well-known personality in the media. Johnny Weissmuller Jr. passed away at the age of 65 due to liver cancer on July 28 at the California Pacific Medical Center, where he was born on September 23, 1940. He was the child of Johnny Weissmuller Sr. and Beryl Scott, his father's third wife, from 1939 to 1948. 
Growing up during his parents' separation and divorce, Weissmuller Jr. lived with his mother in Santa Monica and had limited contact with his father until their reunion during his teenage years. Following his father's death in 1984, Weissmuller Sr. was laid to rest in Acapulco. Weissmuller Jr. received his education in Los Angeles and later served in the Navy, specializing in underwater demolition. Alongside his military service, he pursued acting and appeared in various films, television shows, and stage productions. In 1958, Weissmuller Jr. took his first steps into the cinematic realm with a role in the Mickey Rooney film Andy Hardy Comes Home. His journey in Hollywood continued, marked by appearances in diverse projects, from the Western series Lawman to iconic films like American Graffiti in 1973. Notably, he lent his voice to the character of Tarzan in the English version of the X-rated cartoon Tarzoon, Shame of the Jungle, in 1975, a poignant connection to his father's iconic legacy. Weissmuller Jr.'s family and relationships were very important to him. He married Diane Weissmuller, had a daughter named Heidi, and had a son. But his family life was not always happy. It had moments of sadness and tragedy, just like the rest of the Weissmuller family. Eventually settling in the Bay Area, he worked as a longshoreman while continuing his acting career. His most notable role was as Chief Bromden in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest at the Little Fox Theater in San Francisco. An avid sailor, Weissmuller Jr. participated in yacht races and crewed on several voyages, including the Transpac race from San Francisco to Hawaii. In 202, he penned a memoir titled Tarzan, My Father, recounting his experiences with his famous dad. After retiring as a longshoreman in 205, he focused on writing a book about his dock working days until his cancer diagnosis. Weissmuller Jr. remained active despite his illness, participating in trips and making documentary appearances. He also dedicated time to preserving his father's legacy, working on recovering lost Olympic swimming medals and advocating for a Hollywood Walk of Fame star for Cheetah, the chimpanzee from the Tarzan movies. Survived by his wife Diane, daughter Heidi, sister Wendy, and nephews Adam, Nathan, and Aline, Weissmuller Jr. requested no funeral service, and his ashes will be scattered in Acapulco. Contributions in his memory were directed to the California Pacific Medical Center. Just before Weissmuller Jr.'s death, he revealed something shocking about his late father before he died. Johnny Weissmuller Jr.'s shocking revelation about his father. In an interview with German Way in January 2006, Johnny Weissmuller Jr. revealed that newspaper reports of his father's passing were filled with inaccuracies and myths and that his father deserved better. So he spent almost two decades gathering material for the book he wrote, Tarzan, My Father. Johnny Weissmuller Jr. told German Way that during his research, he discovered that his father wasn't an American citizen when he competed in the Olympics. This fact was unbelievable because his grandma and father kept it a secret for years, and none of his father's wives were aware of it. Aside from Johnny Weissmuller's citizenship, his son also found his tumultuous relationship with Maria, his financial recklessness, and his silence about his children shocking. But overall, Johnny Weissmuller Jr. saw his father as a remarkable person, flawed by the absence of a father figure, excessively loyal, and placing trust in many who didn't deserve it. Johnny Weissmuller Jr. initially published this intimate biography of his famous father in 202, and Pope John Paul II blessed the book. But as of the interview, Weissmuller Jr. disclosed that the book had gotten mostly positive. The only negative feedback came from David Fury, who he thinks was embarrassed because his book Twice the Hero was flawed, as some of his sources misled him. Johnny Weissmuller Jr. also revealed that his dad got the idea for Tarzan's cry from the yodeling of their German neighbors, while Weissmuller himself claimed he was a yodeling champ when he was young. However, both stories were likely made up by Weissmuller himself, as he often did with other tales. Despite this, MGM decided to mix Weissmuller's yell with animal sounds to enhance it. This unique blend of sounds was later used by other actors who couldn't replicate Weissmuller's distinctive cry. There was even a different version for the RKO Tarzan movies. However, Weissmuller was known to occasionally perform a live Tarzan cry quite well. Regardless of the truth, Weissmuller took pride in his Tarzan yell. 
Five months after this interview, Johnny Weissmuller Jr. passed away in San Francisco at 65. Johnny Weissmuller's Autobiographies The first autobiographical official biography of Johnny Weissmuller was released in 1964 while he was still alive and strong. Sadly, this early biography by Narda Onyx titled Water, World, and We Titled turned out to be more make-believe than reality. Right from the start, it spreads the falsehood that the Olympic swimming champ was born in Winbur, Pennsylvania, a secret Johnny kept even from his own family and the author. Towards the end, the Onyx book presents the untruth that Johnny's last wife, Maria, came from a noble German heritage. In between, there were more false stories about Tarzan's marriages and many other aspects of his life. Johnny Weissmuller played a part in spreading many of these untrue tales about his life and career. But even after his passing, many so-called journalists, editors, and biographers didn't bother verifying the facts. For years after his death, even reputable encyclopedias wrongly stated Winbur as Weissmuller's birthplace when he was born in Europe, in what was then Austria-Hungary. But Johnny Weissmuller's only son didn't want to rely solely on his memory. He understood the risks involved in that. In his book, he mentions his father. His memory wasn't always accurate about certain events. He often got things wrong. Johnny Jr. and his wife Diane started gathering documents and photos and speaking with people who knew his father. The resulting book, Tarzan, My Father, written in collaboration with William Reed and W. Craig Reed, gives a raw and eye-opening peek into the life of a man who rose to legendary status in his prime, but was nearly forgotten when he passed away. Tarzan's son makes it abundantly clear that his famous father was just as human as anyone else. While portraying a tender picture, Johnny Jr. also doesn't shy away from revealing many unflattering sides of his father, even if it's painful to remember, let alone write about. The book delves into Johnny Weissmuller's European Austrian Catholic roots, his journey to America with his parents, his upbringing in Chicago, and how he became a remarkable swimming champion and later a movie star. In a smooth, well crafted, easy to follow narrative, young Weissmuller depicts what it was like growing up with his father and how he and his two sisters were cruelly kept from seeing their father for a decade. It was only later that they uncovered the truth. Their mother, Beryl Scott Weissmuller had falsely made it appear their dad didn't want to see them. After divorcing Johnny, Beryl obtained a restraining order to prevent him from doing what he desperately wanted, spending time with his kids. But she never let her children know about it. Beryl seemed more interested in her social life than her children. Losing our father was already tough. Losing our mother to her social circle was the final straw. It affected all of us deeply. Later, the author reflects on his mother. A peculiar woman. A peculiar mother. His mother isn't the only one Johnny Jr. criticizes. While he admits his dad was a terrible businessman, he questions the ethics of Weissmuller's longtime business manager, Bo Roos. Despite the actor's earnings, he wonders how Roos could let his father go broke. Johnny Jr. doesn't hold back, believing Roos was dishonest and exploited his dad. A financial advisor, he argues, should protect their clients, not take advantage of them. The author is much harsher towards his father's fifth and final wife, German-born Maria Gertrude Baumann. Unlike in previous biographies, where Maria was portrayed as a saint who supported Weissmuller during tough times, Johnny Jr. sees her differently. He believes Maria and her daughter Lisa were mostly concerned about themselves. Despite being called the Black Widow by Johnny Jr., Maria got good press, but he thinks she rarely acted in her husband's best interests. Her claim of being part of the Bavarian House of Wittelsbach needs to be confirmed. Little is known about Maria's real background, not even her birthplace. Most biographers accepted her accounts without question, but not Tarzan's son. In contrast, Johnny Jr. praises wife number four, Aline Gates. Weissmuller married Aline on the same day his divorce from Beryl was finalized. During the Jungle Gym years, Aline stood by Weissmuller and became the mother figure his son had always wanted. Johnny Jr. gains a newfound respect for Aline, who supported Johnny through tough times until their relationship fell apart. When he wasn't working, Weissmuller could be difficult to live with. The author shares the tragic loss of his sister Heidi in a car accident in 1962 
when she was only 19 years old. Her death deeply affected their father and Johnny Jr. It was a family tragedy that never truly faded. Over time, their father came to accept Heidi's death, and they grew closer because of it. In other chapters, we learn about Johnny Jr.'s school days and his adventures with Jimmy Mitchum, the son of Robert Mitchum. Despite claims in past biographies that Weissmuller attended college, his son clarifies that his father never passed the eighth grade. We also hear about the joyous days of sailing with his father and Humphrey Bogart, as well as other happy memories. Johnny Jr. and his wife Diane were even married aboard Bogart's Santana. However, as Weissmuller aged, the happy times became less frequent. A series of strokes in the 1970s dealt a serious blow to his happiness. Thanks to Maria, who took him to Acapulco, Johnny Tarzan Weissmuller passed away in Mexico in 1948, far from his true homeland and family who truly cared for him. He now rests in peace in a cemetery in Acapulco, against his son's wishes, another gift from Maria. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.